good morning dear students welcome to virtual class i shall introduce you to your paper number 16 today and that is indian aesthetics when we hear indian aesthetics the first word that must catch our mind is aesthetics what do we mean by aesthetics simply speaking aesthetics is something related to arts it can be in the form of painting music dance drama sculpture in broad sense literature also but anything that pertains to art relates to aesthetics now let us for a moment ask ourselves what do we understand by art what is an art now you may say that madam just now you said that painting and poetry and music and dance blah 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 that all is art but actually any feeling or imagination felt by a man that feeling or imagination when it is conveyed through some medium it is an art what we see a painting the poetry that we read a music that we hear is actually the final form it is actually an expression but the very feeling the very imagination that is conveyed that is expressed through some medium is art i hope that is clear to you now we again come back to the term aesthetics aesthetics is actually a discipline through which philosophers and scholars they try to philosophize the concept of art with reference to beauty now see artists are never concerned with reality their main purpose is to arouse the sense of beauty in either themselves or certainly for the audience so they are they are least concerned with the realistic aspects of the world now modern art these days is again an exception where you find the artists capturing the harsh realities of life but otherwise literature and art are primarily meant to provide pleasure to provide enjoyment hmm? and that is why the this this discipline called aesthetics this school of aesthetics is mainly concerned with the study of beauty as seen as expressed as reflected in various arts <clears throat> different aestheticians different uh, philosophers will have different understanding of beauty now somebody may ask after all beauty is beauty where is the question of difference of opinion so far as beauty is concerned let me tell you you must have heard the name of bharat muni the one who is known for writing of natya shastra when we think of bharat muni then we think of ras theory he talks about eight different rasa eight i am saying because the ninth shankaras was added later on but in all eight or say nine he talks about this ras theory so bharat muni who propounded the ras theory would say that ras is all in literature if you read a poem if you read a drama if you see the performance of a play and various emotions are aroused then that is beauty now after bharat muni there is another aesthetician there is another poetician his name is bhamaha bhamaha is known for writing of kavya alankar okay? alankar we know very well alankar in english we call figures of speech uh, in your first year in the lyric form you have studied some figures of speech right for instance simile metaphor 
paradox, exaggeration, that is hyperbole, so on and so forth. And uh, the arts stream is schooling uh, having in the arts stream, 11th, 12th, they must also have studied various alankars in Gujarati or Sanskrit. Jim ke upma che, ke upreksha che, to upma in English is simile, utpreksha in English is metaphor, rupa uh, is uh, metaphor, so on and so forth. Right? So uh, these various figures of speech or alankaras in Sanskrit are propounded by Bhamaha. So Bhamaha will not say that. When rust is aroused, when emotions are aroused, then that is the beauty of poetry. Bhama will say that beauty in poetry can be found when we add some alankaras to it. Words in themselves do not generate beauty or words in themselves do not have proper meaning. But words, when they become figurative, when they become metaphoric, only then they have sense of beauty or or they uh, what we call become aesthetic right so uh, these are just the primary examples but uh, as such as i said various aestheticians various philosophers various opinions so far as to interpret art is concerned so far as uh, evaluating or analyzing the concept of beauty with reference to art is concerned so, in short, Indian aesthetics talks about uh, philosophizing or analyzing the beauty with reference to Indian literature or Indian arts. Uh, there are six schools in all which come under uh, Indian aesthetics. And in your paper number 16, we have to study four different uh, concepts. We are not to study uh, entire uh, work, say Nati Shastra, to, it's not that we are to study the entire Nati Shastra, we are only to study the concept of Ras, Kavya Alankar, then various Alankaras, uses and abuses of Alankaras, so on and so forth, right? So a few concepts from the four major poeticians, four major aestheticians, we are to study. And uh, number one uh, is uh, Bharat Muni's uh, Ras concept. Secondly, we have Bhamaha's Alankar. Thirdly, uh, Kuntak's Vakrokti Jivitam. Vakrokti, that is made of two words. Vakra, that is oblique, and Ukti, way of saying. So uh, when you say something in a direct or explicit manner, and the same thing when you say in an oblique manner, then, then that obliqueness adds to the charm of poetry. That is what Kuntak believes. We shall go into deep uh, study of Kuntak's Vakrokti Jivitam when we uh, actually start with our syllabus. Uh, and the fourth one is uh, Dhanya Lok, hmm? Anand Vardhan's Dhani Theory, Dhani's Sound. Dhani class ma di koinu naam hoye nahi, but Dhani means sound. Every word has a sound. Hmm? You must be familiar with the word onomatopoeia. Hmm? That, that is also one of the figures of speeches. You might have studied in your lyric form paper in the first year. Uh, onomatopoeia are the words that have sound. Snake. When snake is uh, passing through the grass, so in a typical sound, and it is known as hissing sound, hissing sound of a snake. Then um, when the train is running, uh, then, then the wheels that collide with the railway tracks. Hmm? So that, that, is, that is called a rattling sound uh, or the stream flowing. Uh, so uh, it's a beautiful study of words and how they uh, add beauty to the entire poetic composition. It's a wonderful uh, uh, branch of study. So in short, these four concepts, the Ras theory, Alankar theory, Vakrokti and Dhvani. This four we have to study in our paper number 16, Indian Aesthetics. I hope you are clear with the very term aesthetics, how it is uh, viewed with reference to art and beauty. Hmm? Uh, 
let us talk about the first uh, concept, the first part of our paper number 16, that is Bharat Muni's Natya Shakti. Rust theory for Apre Avye, Epela, it is necessary to know that who discussed this concept of Rust and where is it discussed. Then Bharat Muni discusses the concept of Rust theory and he discusses this concept in his treatise. I'm not saying in his book, I'm saying it's treatise. You know, it is a it is a scripture. Natya Shastra is considered a scripture, it is a treatise, Shastra. So uh, he discusses this concept of Rust theory in his treatise, Natya Shastra. Hmm? Uh, to tell you a story in brief, of course, we are going to read some of the passages from the first chapter of uh, Natya Shastra. Uh, but uh, let me tell you how Natya Shastra came into origin briefly. We all know what kind of uh, social structure, social system India had. We believed in rigid class and caste distinctions and lots of do's and don'ts for various uh, people of social strata, uh, people belonging to high caste, say Brahmins, would have uh, entry and would have permissions to do almost everything in society. Whereas people belonging to lower strata of society would not be allowed to uh, enter the temple and they would not be allowed to perform religious rituals they were not allowed to uh, read even religious texts, so on and so forth, right? So uh, there was once, you know, sort of uh, chaos and uh, people thought that the society as such offers lots of do's and don'ts and there are lots of rigidities. So where to find uh, something to entertain ourselves? What is the medium to please ourselves, to make ourselves feel happy and that is why uh, they approached uh, Brahma and, and from Brahma uh, Bharat Muni was uh, selected to write to create the fifth Ved, the Natisha. This is in brief. Now uh, let me share you some uh, selected verses of Natya Shastra which I have taken from the very first chapter of Natya Shastra. <coughs> Before we go to the uh, selected verses of chapter 1, let me also tell you something in brief about the text Natya Shastra. Uh, if you divide the word, it is Natya and Shastra. Natya is drama and Shastra, as I said, treatise. Now, in Sanskrit, Natya is a broad term. It, it differs to a great extent from the understanding of the word drama in English parlance and the understanding of the word Natya in Indian parlance. If we look at the word drama from the English uh, perspective, English uh, point of view, then it is strictly a prose composition divided into certain acts and has characters and these and that. You already know what drama is. You have studied the history of Greek drama. You have studied some of Shakespeare's drama. So you know that English concept of drama. But in India, particularly in the Sanskrit dramas, let me use the word Natya here. Natya included the element of song, that is music, an element of dance as well. So it's a beautiful troika or trio of acting, music and dance. So Natya, that's why I said that Natya is a broad term. It is, it is a comprehensive art form which has a lot of other technicalities and other auxiliary arts in it as well. So uh, in Natya Shastra, uh, now you are clear with the, with the term Natya, we shall not use the word drama here uh, as we use in the English uh, paradigm, but we shall use strictly use the word Natya only hmm? because it is a comprehensive term, it is an all-inclusive term. Okay, 
uh, Natya Shastra, it is said that it has its basis on Gandharva Ved. Gandharva Ved is an appendix to Sam Ved. So, taking the basis of the Vedas, Brahma created this particular fifth Ved, which he called Natya Ved, and then gave it to Bharat Muni. And there are 36 chapters in the Natya Shastra. So don't worry, we are concerned with chapter 6 and 7. Rust theory and Bhav theory ni jema baat aave chai. Ena upar apadu focus rae chai. But uh, you must know the background of the Natya Shastra. And that is why I am uh, telling you all these things. So there are 36 chapters in the Natya Shastra. And in all, there are 6,000 verses or shlokas in the Natya Shastra. J Gandharva Vedni Vatkari, which is an appendix to Samaved, in that there are 36,000 shlokas. So, uh, 6,000 we have in the Natya Shastra. Uh, chapter 6 and 7 will be our chief concern, as I said. And then, Pachikani Badi Andarvato Natya Shastra Mache, Kathi Sharuthayu, any Chemetamne story, kahi, lots of uh, social rigidity. We shall also talk about that. But first, let us go to the selected verses from chapter 1. Chapter 1 talks about the origin of drama. So let me show you some of the verses here. As you can read, Natya Shastra begins with a salutation. Salutation, it like English ma invocation. That's why in Sanskrit we call it avahan. So Bharat Muni in the beginning invokes the God, the Supreme, and says, Pranamya Shirsa Devo, Pita Maha Maheshwaro. Natya Shastra Prabhakshyami Brahmana Yadudharutam which means now you can read the translation here with a bow to Pitamaha that is Brahma and Maheshwara that is Shiva now see Lord Shiva is the Lord of Drama also Nataraj we call him isn't it so Lord Shiva is the supreme deity of arts and a Brahma is the one who bestowed the Natya Shastra to Bharat Muni. And that is why Bharat Muni in all humbleness invokes Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva. So with a bow to Pitamaha, Brahma and Maheshwara, that is Shiv, I shall explain the canons of drama, that is Natya Shastra, which were uttered by Brahma. Look at the humbleness of uh, Bharat Muni, that uh, though he was chosen by, by the God, by the creator, Brahma is the creator, isn't it? So though he was chosen by the creator, he doesn't take everything on him. This is, uh, I mean, something not worthy about all the Indian writers, Sanskrit masters, whether, whether uh, it is uh, Bharat Muni or Kalidas or Mahak, Bhat, any anyone you take. Uh, even come to Gujarati literature, Narsi Mehta and Bai and all, they always, uh, at, the, at the end, they would write their names in Pad, in poetry. But initially, when they are to write something good, uh, particularly when it is meant to contribute to society, uh, uh, Nanchi Shastra was created to benefit the, all the classes of society, isn't it? To provide entertainment to, to all the classes of society. So it is, uh, it is in, the, in the advantage of society. They are doing the service to society by writing Natya Shastra. And that is why uh, Bharat Muni very humbly invokes the two deities. Okay, we go further. And the sages question that... Uh, 
Once in the days of yore, high soul sages such as Atreya and others, you know, we, we, we are familiar with uh, this Guru Shishya Parampara in the ancient times. They used to study by living in the hermitage of their Guru. And once in the free time, this Atreya and other Rishi, they approached Bharat Muni. And what did they ask? Bharat Muni had just completed the prayers and he was surrounded by these rishis uh, or their sons. Bharat Muni, it is, it is written in the Shastras that Bharat Muni had hundred sons. So these hundred sons, they come to Bharat Muni and they ask that, O oh Brahma, how did you originate the Natya Ved similar to the Vedas which you have properly composed? For whom is it meant? How many limbs means how many chapters does it possess? What is its extent? How much it covers? And how is it to be applied? You know, the sons or the shishyas we may call, they were very keen to know that how Parakmuni composed such an extensive text, such a comprehensive text. For whom is it made? And uh, what does it include? What is its scope? These were the questions that this uh, Rishi had in their mind. And to, to get the answers of these questions, they approach Bharat Muni. And what does Bharat Muni say? Now let us go to the verse again to see the reply of, to see the answer of Bharat Muni. And uh, to answer the questions or to satisfy the curiosity of the sages or the sons, Bharat Muni replies about the Natya Ved. <clears throat> and he, he acknowledges, uh, he already begins with the invocation and then in the answer to the uh, sages also, he says that this, this plan of writing the Natya Shastra was devised by Brahma. It was suggested by Brahma. And uh, he then says that, uh, you know, in the, in the ancient times, when people had got addicted to sensual pleasures, when they had uh, forgotten their uh, basic duties, when they had, they had been under the sway of uh, greeds and desires, and uh, they were living a very mean life. At that time, these Gandharvas, gods, Yakshas, you know, semi-divine beings, we may, we may say, they approach Brahma, you know, uh, a great say, uh, seer, and they say that we want an object of diversion. Hmm, the people on earth are living a very mean life. They are living a very low life. And we really want something to uplift ourselves, to enlighten ourselves, enlighten through uh, refined enjoyment. And that is why he says that, that is why they approach Brahma and they say that we want something as, as an object of diversion, uh, which must be audible as well as visible. And I talked about uh, the term Natya to you sometime before and I say that it has a beautiful combination of uh, acting, music and dance, right? So music is the auditory aspect dance and acting that is performance is a visual aspect so it uh, uh, that is why natya in sanskrit is also known as drishya rupa atvato drishya karya right so something which is visible also and something which is uh, uh, audible also that kind of uh, entertainment they asked for to brahma and uh, then what did brahma say Vedas, uh, th this story I also told you that Vedas are not listened to by those who are born as Shudras. And uh, that is why they request Brahma to create another Ved, which is a combination of all the four Vedas and which is mainly open to all. And then Brahma said that Tathastu, 
let it be so and then he went into meditation and then he thought that what he can take as an essence as a culmination uh, from all the four vedas and what can be created out of these four vedas um, and then he promises to the gods the yakshas the gandharvas who had who had approached brahma with a request uh, brahma uh, promises that i shall make a fifth ved on the natya with the semi historical tales that is itihas which will conduce to fourfold functions of human life that is dharma artha kaam and moksha right so natya shastra nu je purpose che ej brahma bada devo ne shuruat ma kai de che that it will conduce to it will adhere to fourfold functions so those who are looking for righteous actions in in drama they will find the dharma the the code of conduct moral conduct those who are looking for earth that is wealth those who wish to earn money out of it so natya uh, by by giving the performances of natya they'll be able to earn money also uh, kaam that is uh, fulfillment of pleasures and desires hmm, by entertaining yourself will also be uh, possible through this dramatic performance and moksha that is those who wish to attain salvation by following the righteous conduct one can attain the salvation right so this four fold functions uh, this particular way the natya ved will fulfill that is what he assures and uh, what will be the basic uh, um, content in it then brahma says that it will include itihas story from the past but then it will also have relevance in present and it will also suggest something good for the future generations right so it will have past present and future everything together and that is why it is a it is considered a divine text that's why it is a ved hmm? let us go further in our, in our uh, reading of the passages it will have good counsel and a collection of uh, other materials for human well being it will give guidance to the people of fortune as well as in all their actions it will be enriched by the teaching of all scriptures all the shastras all the scriptures will be there in it it already refers to the art of music it already refers to the art of uh, dance music then it also includes musical instruments dharma artha kaam moksha itihas right so in many ways it is a comprehensive text and then it will also give a review of all the arts and crafts now how all the arts and crafts then uh when we say drama and the performance of the drama then people cannot just come on the stage and start performing you think of a movie theater you think of any good movie you like or any good movie that you have recently watched you have not only hero and heroine villain and other supportive characters they are in their proper costumes as the scene changes as the situation changes their costumes also change every character has different type of makeup isn't it the makeup of heroine will be different from the supportive say uh, the makeup of her friend makeup of a hero and makeup of villain are entirely different then the setting a place where the entire film is is shooted recorded similarly here in case of drama the stage setting the place the room the palace the gallery the garden everything you have to demonstrate on certain size of the stage then you require lighting so 
all this craftsmanship this skills they are auxiliary arts to stage or drama so when bharat muni talks about natya the performative text he also has to take into consideration other aspects of drama as well so it is with this sense that brahma tells the gods and gandharvas and yakshas that it will have so many other arts in it and it will also have other crafts uh, the mention of other crafts in it okay. uh, to go further and natya ved will be compiled from the all the four vedas now which element bharat muni uh, uh, or rather uh, brahma ji takes that we are to see so the recitative aspect the patya brahma takes from rigveda then samved uh, most of us would be knowing that samved is known for the song element all the major sanskrit shlokas we find in the samved and they are sung also they are composed to music right so the element of song which is there in the drama is taken from samved then histrionic expressions or representations that is abhinay abhinay is taken from uh, yajurved and sentiments that is rasa which is our chief concern it is taken from atharva ved uh, now here is a hint for mcq as well uh, you can have this particular mcq that uh, in the natya shastra which element is taken from which ved rigved samved yajurved atharva ved and a sentiment or rasa is taken from atharva ved that is the most important question here you all have to remember let's go further <clears throat> now uh, brahma went into meditation he he thought that he will take these various elements from these four vedas and it will have itihas and the mention of other arts and crafts and this is how natya ved will be prepared will be ready so once natya ved is ready he calls indra and he he tells indra that now this this natya ved with semi historical tales is ready it is composed by me and now you have to get it dramatized you have to find a director get it dramatized and let it be acted by the gods see let it be acted by the gods that is what brahma says means natya ved is of certain stature it is of certain dignity where no mere beings no ordinary people can take part in it can can perform in that it requires the characters it requires people with certain refinement and that is why he wishes that gods should first perform uh, on this natya ved but indra said that there is a problem in appointing gods as characters because gods are not so familiar with all the history and all these arts and crafts in the indian system we have different gods for different arts isn't it so like if you want uh, if you want knowledge then you have to go to lord saraswati ma saraswati if you were, if you wish to have mastery in art in in dance and drama then you have to go to lord shiva so uh, hindra said that gods will not be able to perform on this natya ved they are not befitting characters then what to do then let's see what what brahma says brahma said that you pass this natya ved to the gods who are skilled and learned and they are free from stage fear and they they have no problem in doing hard work they are tuned to hard work so uh, 
after that uh, as indra said that gods will not be able to perform on this and that is why he suggests uh, brahma that he should rather appoint one person who can take it down to the gods and who can who can teach to gods and the people on earth and then at at that time brahma thinks of bharat muni because bharat muni is all skilled all knowledgeable and that is why on the request of indra brahma calls bharat muni to the heaven and then assigns this work of uh, taking natya ved to gods and to still down to the earth and this is how natya ved or natya shastra has reached us પછી એની અંદર ઘણું બધું આવે છે કે વેરિયસ સ્ટાઇલ્સ એ નાટ્ય શાસ્ત્ર છે નાટકનું પરફોર્મન્સ છે તો ડિફરન્ટ કેરેક્ટર્સ આઈ ઓલરેડી સે કે હીરો હિરોઇન એન વિલન ધીસ થ્રી આર ધ મેઇન કેરેક્ટર્સ ઇન એની મુવી ઓર ઇન એની ડ્રામા તો એવરી કેરેક્ટર હેઝ ડિફરન્ટ સ્ટાઇલ ઓફ એક્ટિંગ એન્ડ સ્પીકિંગ તો એના ઉપરથી કૌશિકી આરભટી સાત્વતી સોન એન્ડ સોફોર્થ ગૌડી રાઇટ સો ગ્રેસફુલ એનર્જેટિક હિરોઇક સોન એન્ડ સોફોર્થ ઇઝ વેરિયસ સ્ટાઇલ્સ સો ડિપેન્ડ કે વિચ કેરેક્ટર ઇઝ ટુ બી પ્રેઝન્ટેડ ઓન સ્ટેજ ઇન વિચ સિચ્યુએશન હી ઓર શી ઇઝ ટુ બી પ્રેઝન્ટેડ એન્ડ દેટ ઓલ ડેટમાઇન્સ ધ સ્ટાઇલ અને દેર આર ફોર વૃત્તિસ કે ફોર સ્ટાઇલ્સ જયારે આપણે વધારે ડિટેલમાં કરીશું નાટ્યશાસ્ત્ર ત્યારે પણ એની વાત આવશે સો રાઇટ નાઉ ટુ કટ ધ સ્ટોરી શોર્ટ દેર આર ફોર સ્ટાઇલ્સ અને એમાં કૌશિકી કેમ ટુ બી લેટર એડિશન અર્લિયર દેવર થ્રી એન્ડ દેન બ્રહ્મા સજેસ્ટ ભરત મુનિ દેટ ઇફ ધ ગ્રેસ ઇઝ મિસિંગ દેન એવરીથિંગ ફોલ્સ અપાર્ટ ઇટ ઇઝ ઓનલી કોરલ એન્ડ ઇટ ઇઝ ઓનલી being the libel and uh, it is only shouting and all but there should be something to tame everything there should be something uh, graceful and that is why brahma bestows on bharat muni the knowledge of kaushiki style kaushiki is graceful so uh, this is how four styles come to be uh, introduced in the natya shastra and uh, then the performance part when it is to be performed natya shastra natya ved taiyar thai gayo natya ved kon agar lai jaye jan samanya sudhi kon pahunchade e badu nakki thai gayo kaya ved ma thi kayu aspect levanu chhe e badi baat thai gayi have when the film is to be released in the movie theaters it is released on every friday no matter which particular festival which particular day is it every friday is fixed but now this natya ved is created by brahma hmm? so brahma will not release it on any friday brahma said that it should be first performed on the most suitable day and that is why the first production of the play was on the banner festival of indra indra no je banner festival means je apne dhaja mahotsav kahiye chhe so in that in that banner festival of indra it should be first performed uh, and then this is how uh, it came to uh, be introduced to various gods yakshas gandharvas uh, even danavas and asuras they also took part in the performance of the play apne hindi filmo thi vadhare parichit chhe to hindi filmo ma pan villain nu patra hoy chhe shakespeare na dramas you have studied to in shakespeare's dramas also you have uh, if you think of othello for example to othello has a, a villainous character in it and the name of the character is iago hmm to so, uh, hamlet for example every tragedy will have a villainous character in it 
અને એ ઇન્ડિયન કન્સેપ્ટ જે છે નાટ્યનો એમાં પણ દેર ઇઝ અ સિમિલારિટી તો દીઝ અસુરસ ઓર ધીઝ દાનવસ દે આર નથિંગ એલ્સ દેન વોટ વી કોલ વિલન્સ તો દે ઓલ્સો ટુક પાર્ટ ઇન ઇટ હવે દીસ વોઝ અ ડિવાઇન પરફોર્મન્સ ઇઝ એન્ટ ઇટ રિટન બાય આઈ મીન કમ્પોઝ બાય ધી ગોડ ધ ક્રિએટર સી કેપિટલ ક્રિએટર બ્રહ્મ then given to a sage culmination of all the four vedas so on and so forth so when it is performed when it is being performed on on a stage in the banner festival of indra then at that time to protect the theater ke apne ne rang manch kai shu theater is a western uh, uh, understanding of it here we in indian context we call it rang manch so when it is performed on the rang manch then nothing untoward should happen and that is why brahma appointed the protectors jene apne dwar pal kahiye mahal hoy raja no ema dwar pal hoy to ye dwar pal ni appointment pan brahma kare chhe ane e badhi j baat in the very first chapter of natya shastra origin of drama ma apanne bharat ni kare chhe વરુણ દેવ છે તો એને દ્વારપાળ તરીકે એનું કામ સોંપે છે કે કોઈ ઇવિલ એલિમેન્ટ અંદર આવી ના જાય લાઇટનિંગ ધીઝ આર ધ સ્પિરિટ્સ ધીઝ આર ધી એલિમેન્ટ દેટ બ્રહ્મા પોઈન્ટ લાઇટનિંગ વીજળી તો દેટ ઇઝ ગિવન ધ ટાસ્ક ઓફ પ્રોટેક્ટિંગ ધ પિલર્સ સો દેટ ઇફ દેર ઇઝ અ નેચરલ કેલેમિટી ધ પિલર્સ ઓફ ધ સ્ટેજ ડુ નોટ કોલેપ્સ so just just to think how thoughtful and how meticulous work uh, brahma has done to compose the natya ved hmm? uh, so this discussion you have in the very first chapter of natya shastra origin of drama kone lakhyu kevi rite lakhyu kaya kaya elements thi natya ved banyu kone ma perform kari shake ane first production uh, enu kyare thoy that this discussion we have in the first chapter ane baki na je chapters che like uh, second chapter is on the stage craft the design of the stage the uh, the size uh, the capacity to uh, accommodate the audience all this you have in the second chapter then you have a chapter on music you have entirely different chapter on musical instruments sat suro je che shadaj rishab gandhar madhyam pancham devat ane nishad to eni par in brief discussion bharat muni does in in one of the chapters in the natya shastra sangeet na vadyo they are also of different types tantu vadya kitar vadya for example our sitar our guitar tanpura વીણા એ સમય તો વીણા હતી વિચિત્ર વીણા સો દેટ ઇઝ તંતુ વાદ્ય દેન ઘન વાદ્ય તબલા પખાવજ ઓલ દેટ અવનધ વાદ્ય દેન ઓલ ધીસ ડિસ્કશન્સ યુ હેવ ઇન એન્ટાયરલી ડિફરન્ટ ચેપ્ટર ઇન ધ નાટ્ય શાસ્ત્ર ડાન્સ વી હેવ ઓલરેડી ડિસ્કસ્ડ અબાઉટ ઇટ ધેટ ડાન્સ ઇઝ એન ઇન્ટીગ્રલ પાર્ટ ઓફ ડ્રામા અને ગ્રીક ટ્રેજડીમાં પણ તમે આ શીખ્યા છો આઈ મીન ગ્રીક ડ્રામાઝ નું જ્યારે when you learned about it chorus for example you have studied about chorus in your first year i guess um, there also uh, you have like a, a, a group of people singing together and then moving to the right uh, moving to the left and standing still hmm? so strophe entostrophe and epod that is what uh, their movement is called and in apne ગ્રીક ટ્રેડિશન પ્રમાણે નામ આપ્યું ઓડ સોંગ ઓફ સેલિબ્રેશન તો સોંગ હેઝ ઓલવેઝ બીન એન ઇન્ટીગ્રલ પાર્ટ ઓફ ડ્રામાઝ વેધર ઇટ ઇન ઇન ગ્રીક કન્વેન્શન ઓફ ડ્રામા કે ઇન્ડિયન કન્વેન્શન તો ડાન્સ હિયર વુડ મીન પ્યોર ઇન્ડિયન ક્લાસિકલ મેઇનલી ધ ભરતનાટ્યમ રાઇટ અને એની વેરિયસ મુદ્રાઝ હસ્ત મુદ્રા Uh, then various movements of eyes uh, for various emotions you uh, the heroine turns the eyes in different ways so uh, which movement of eye suggests what uh, which type of hasta mudra hmm? for example this to indicate beauty to appreciate something hmm? this 
तो मृग तो डियर सो डिफरेंट मुद्रास टू सजेस्ट समथिंग और टू एक्सप्रेस सर्टन इमोशंस ओके सो आनी पण विषय दक्षिणावत भरत मुनि इना एक चैप्टर मा करे छे अने जुदा जुदा भाव जुदा जुदा रस इना ऊपर पण चैप्टर 6 अने 7 दे आर बेस्ड सो आवर नेक्स्ट डिस्कशन विल बी ऑन आवर कोर टॉपिक ऑफ रस एंड भाव थियरी रस थियरी ऊपर जता पहला हजु एक वक्त आपरे भाव विषय समझवो पड़शे सो देयर विल बी sort of uh, introductory or uh, background lecture sort of you can say uh, to understand what is bhavas and ena upar thi apne ras theory vishe charcha kari shakishu right so uh, but uh, this this introductory uh, lecture wherein we discussed about the natya shastra Uh, is also important because some of the assignments that you will write for paper number 16 you shall have uh, at least one assignment uh, from this particular session of origin of drama uh, if i have not mentioned the date of writing of natya shastra then let me tell you it was written around 200 bc and 200 ad etle to be precise you can say second century bc uh, ma natya shastra lakhayo chu hmm. so this can be the mcq four elements from four different vedas can be the mcq uh, who composed actually originally first then who bestowed it on bharat muni athwa to from whom bharat muni received the natya ved natya shastra uh, that can be the mcq hmm. Uh, so make sure that uh, you are through you are uh, well versed with this introduction of origin of drama before we move to bhava and ras concepts that is all for today have a nice time